What's up, interwebs? I'm that toy guy, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers, Robots in Disguise, Minicon Weaponizers, Windblade. God, that's quite a mouthful. And here she is. So, but first, we'll take a look at the box. So, it's a new, new style of box with the uh, green at the bottom here. You have a picture of the alt mode. It says Windblade. It says the whole Minicon Weaponizer thing on the top. You have a very nice picture of Windblade and free scan if anyone wants it. And just in case you forgot what franchise this is from. Da -da, da -da, da -da, sorry. On the back you have a picture of the toy, you have your instructions, your whole compatibility with minicons, and your application instructions and whatnot, with that same Age of Extinction Bumblebee still in the box, but oh well. Here's the toy, and this is actually good. Like my friend, he um, the one who hates heads and boxes. He um, has the Generations Windblade, I don't. Twisty ties out of here. I don't, and um, I didn't want to buy it because it looked very flimsy, and it is. I mean, I've held it, and it was very, it's his, his version at least is very flimsy. So I was waiting for this one, and it's actually not supposed to be out here in Canada yet, I don't think, at the time of this recording, but they had two of these sitting on the shelf at Walmart, along with a whole bunch of Scorpinox and Thunderhoof and Megatronus and Power Surge Optimus Primes. They had a whole bunch of those as well, along with the Titans Returns, so that was awesome. But yeah, I picked this up, cost me $20. Jeez, Deluxes are a lot more expensive now. They were, back in 2014 when Age of Extinction came out, a Deluxe was $15. It's 2016 and a Deluxe is now 20 so I don't know. But anyway, here she is. Here's her VTOL jet, very cartoon accurate and it looks quite nice. I really do like this. The one problem I do have is with the hands sticking out, but I mean it's, we've come to expect that nowadays with jet formers. Like, his hands are there as well. And, yeah. Well, comparison quickly. Here she is with another airplane, and she has a bigger wingspan. I do quite like this wingspan. I think it is really cool. It's bigger than this, which is what I'm used to, so yeah. But ugh. she does have a little. This my figure, at least, does have a little bit of. Uh, does have a couple of problems. I can't speak English. Uh, the first one is the landing gear here is quite loose. Like you can just push on that little nub that's sticking off right there, and out pops the landing gear. But you put her down and just tap her on the nose, she'll just fall over. So I don't know how to get to that joint. Oh, I just have to take these two screws off and then tighten that joint up. And this wing here has a tendency to just pop up like if you just lightly tap it oh there it goes so that kind of sucks as well but other than that that's fine now it does she does come with two accessories well three one of them is already on here ah the landing gear but two accessories the sword sheath and the sword which just has a VTOL engine there and it's all black it's not pink or purple like the um, original version but it just fits in the sheath and the sheath can plug into the bottom here so you just pull the landing gear peg it in place and that's your storage and that looks super ridiculous but oh well I don't store the sword I don't usually do that but yeah that's really about it for that um, she does have some nice silver paint on her um, nose cone here. You get some nice um, black there for the um, cockpit if my, there we go. You have a really nice gunmetal gray style paint going on here on the hinges and up here on the tail. I do quite like the uh, rear end of the plane. I think it's done really well. Uh, you have some nice um, maroon color here and that all spark blue. God I love all spark blue. Underneath you can kind of see how the robot works out. I mean arms torso, legs, crotch. At least she does a better job at hiding her face. But, yeah. So, I guess there's nothing left to do but to get onto robot mode. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to take the VTOLs and fold them down. Oh, I forgot to mention. The VTOLs are articulated. They can do a full 360. And the turbines inside can spin as well. Now, on the transformation, you want to fold the VTOLs down and fold the wings back, just like so. They will, like, click into place there. So, that's nice. Then you want to untap the arms, not all the way because then you'll end up breaking this. You want to pull this forward, take this section and bring it back, 
on this hinge here. That top hinge there, and then close that up. Then you can take the arms and bring them out of the way. You want to come back here to this gunmetal section, push it up, accordion it in, and then you can fold this section all the way back down. Then what you want to do is you want to take the legs, sort of combiner wars style, fold them out, fold down the feet, rotate at the waist, split the legs. There you have, ladies and gentlemen, there is Windblade in her robot mode. And this looks pretty cool. It's missing a lot of black paint, but this does look pretty cool. Now, just getting close here on the head sculpt. Zoom, there we go. Very windblady head sculpt, again missing all the black paint on her, but at least they have the yellow up top here. Her face is nicely painted. The other version of this at Walmart, the uh, other uh, R.I.D. windblade, didn't have this. Like, this was missing from the box completely. I almost bought that one, too. And she had a massive red streak going across her face. So I told the customer service desk, and they said, okay, we'll take a look at it, and they're probably just going to stick it back on the shelf, but oh well. But you do have some very nice detail going throughout. Again, more all spark blue there. Free scan. Something in this house is buzzing. Um, you got more of that gunmetal color here for the top of the hips. Hips in black, all spark blue. More of that maroon color. Her feet are nicely done. This means she can actually stand instead of the other version, which had a problem with that. The arms are nicely molded too. Again, missing that black paint. But I don't. I haven't seen if what the Takara version looks like. I don't know if there's pictures of that yet. But if it looks better, I'll probably end up getting that and selling this one. But she does have some very nice. Um, in wing detail in there as well. I do quite like that a lot. So yeah, this figure is chock full of detail. Now, just zooming out here so my phone will phone, my camera will focus. I'm getting distracted because my I, someone's texting me. But articulation wise, head is on a ball joint. Um, that can look up. It cannot look down, but it can do a full 360. And you do have a little bit of neck pivot, which is, well, you have actually quite a bit of neck pivot, which is nice. Arms are on, shoulders are on ball joints, so they can do whatever you want. There's a very tight bicep swivel. A uh, single jointed elbow that bends at just about 90 degrees. Nothing at the wrist, which kind of sucks. Waist joint, ball jointed hip, huge ball jointed hips. Um, thigh swivel. Single jointed knee that bends at about 90 degrees, but if you're okay with there being a slight gap, there's your double jointed knee right there. If you're okay with this junk here, then there you have a double jointed knee. And I'm totally fine with it, so double jointed knee it is. And the ankles can move down, and they can move up. So you can get some really, really nice poses out of this person, person out of this figure. Now, bear with me here. Turning her around, there's a little hole right here on her butt. Really odd. But that's where you can plug a uh, flight stand into, so you can get her into some really cool flight poses. I don't have a flight stand because, God forbid, you can find one at a hobby store in Canada somewhere. But no, you can't. Um, so I don't have a flight stand. I'll probably get into buying one at Fan Expo if I see one. But it can plug into flight stands. I'm not sure if it can plug into the old Marvel Legends flight stands, but every other flight stand nowadays is universal, so they should be able. It should be able to plug into that. But for accessories. She can, she just had the sword, now this, the sword sheath has two little n things sticking out of it that can plug into the ball joint slits there. You can just peg them on and now her sword is sheathed on her side, but it does inhibit her hip articulation because there's a peg right there for storage. But you can have her hold the sword. My camera decided to do that thing again where it freezes on its own, but anyway, as I was saying, the sword can peg into her hand, but it is a rectangular handle, so it's kind of hard to get it to peg in, but it is, it does peg in. And you can remove that little thing on the back of her head there and put it in her hands, but she will not hold it to save her life, so I'm not going to put it in her hands. But yeah, that's Windblade. So, for comparison, here she is with Skydive, and Skydive is just a tad bit taller, but again, this is the superior figure between both of these, by far. So yeah, overall, this figure is absolutely amazing, and I highly would highly recommend anyone pick this figure up. She is... I know I've heard a lot of people say, Oh, I already have Generations Windblade, so I don't need the R.I.D. one. The R.I.D. one, in my opinion, is better. 
I mean, it doesn't look like the Generations version, but toy-wise, it's a better toy than the other one, because the other one has that heel problem where they'll fold in and she'll fall backwards. It has a problem with loose joints, because I know all the Thrilling 30 Generations figures had a problem with loose joints. Um, her wings tend to flop down sometimes. Well, at least on my friends, they tend to flop down sometimes. Um, and the sword, because it's made out of a trans, uh, translucent plastic, is a little bit more brittle than this because it's solid cast in black. So, to me, this one is the better figure. I probably will end up getting the Generations version, the Takara, because I hate the Hasbro one. The Hasbro one looks like crap. I will probably end up getting that, and then I'll do, if I review that, then I'll do a comparison with this. But this one, in my mind, is the better of the two figures. But, then again, your personal preference is totally up to you, whichever one you want. But I like this one a lot better. So that has been my look at the uh, Transformers Robots in Disguise Minicon Weaponizer Warrior Class Windblade, and I'm that toy guy, and stay tuned for my next video.